Hello, and in this video, we're going to look at the deflection of a cantilever beam that is subjected to a parabolic load. So if we have you know, some sort of a beam, and we'll say that the load at any point, v, v of x, uh, is equal to whatever this uh, value is here at, at the root, P naught times L squared minus X squared all over L squared. So that's our, that's our equation. And I know that the total uh, shear force is the integral of that. So when we integrate uh, V of X, so it's L squared minus X squared all over L squared. So I'm taking this L squared out, the two constants out. I get uh, L squared X minus X cubed over three plus A. And I know that out at this point here, you know, the shear would be zero. So I can say when x is equal to L, the shear is zero. So I'm going to put L in for x. So this becomes L cubed. This becomes L cubed over three. So that's uh, two thirds of L times P naught uh, plus A should be equal to zero. Okay, so that means A must be 2L over 3 times P0. So I'm going to put that back into this uh, equation here. So that is uh, the shear. If I want to get the bending moment then, so there's the shear. The bending moment is uh, the integral of that. So I'm going to integrate it uh, over the distance from 0 to L to get what the total bending moment is. And when I do that, I get um, L squared X squared over two minus X to the power four over 12 minus two L to the, uh, X, two L cubed X over, over three. I'm gonna put in zero and L and I'll get a final value of uh, the bending moment is equal to minus P naught L squared over four. Now, if we assumed P naught was 24,825 and L was 7.39 meters, that would give me a value of 338.9 kilonewton meters. Um, what, I, what I've done is I replicated this in Microsoft Excel. So I'm just gonna switch over. So this is Microsoft Excel. So I'm, I've put the P naught value in here of 24,825, the length of 7.39 and I've stepped out x in steps of 0 0.2 of a meter and um, what I have done is uh, there's my equation uh, so it's p naught times l squared minus x squared over l squared so that's what's in this this cell here and I've used uh, the trapezoidal rule to sum that all up so that will give me the total uh, load so that would be the total shear force and for the bending moments then I've just multiplied the load by the distance and because this one's at zero I just multiplied this by somewhere in between 0.1 okay and I also integrated that using the trapezoidal rule so this is the trapezoidal rule here so there's the formula for it and I get 338.9 kilonewton meters and that agrees fairly close very closely to what we have um, here with them um, with the actual way okay so it gives me a de degree of confidence in in that equation okay so I have a value for M uh, when X is not okay so this would be the full area then when, when X is in here we have this full area okay so if I have the shear force and want to get the bending moment I uh, at any point I will integrate it and when I integrate it I get um, this is the indefinite integral I get uh, L squared X squared over 2 minus X to the power 4 over 12 minus 2L cubed X all over 3 plus some constant of integration B but I know that when X is 0 um, M is equal to minus P naught L squared over 4 so when I put that into that equation <coughs> If x is zero, these these all go to zero. So then b uh, just becomes uh, minus p naught l squared over four. So I have a value of b, and I'm going to substitute that back in here 
into this uh, equation. So now I have my bending moment at any point. Okay, if I want to get the uh, deflection, I need to uh, do a double integral of that equation. So when I integrate it <clears throat> once, I'll get the slope. And when I do integrate it, I, um, I get L squared X cubed over six minus X to the four, X to the five over 60 minus L cubed X squared all over three and uh, L to the four times X over four plus some constant of integration C. However, uh, at this point here, when X is zero, there will be no slope. So uh, C is therefore zero. If I want to get the deflection, I, I integrate this once more. So when I integrate it a second time, I get L squared X to the four over 24, X to the six over 360, X to the three over nine, and X squared over eight, okay? Plus some constant of integration D. But when X is zero, Y is zero. So there's no deflection here at this point. So therefore D is zero. So that uh, <clears throat> then becomes my equation for the deflection at any point. So what I just did was I've taken the, the 360 and x squared out. So there's the 360 and the x squared. And um, yeah, we're left, we're left with this value here. So that's the deflection at, uh, at any point. Okay, so if we rearrange that, bringing the L to the 4 to the left, so it's L4, L3, L2, and then L0, and then it's X to the 0, 0, X to the 1, X to the 2, and X to the 4. So that is the uh, the equation for the deflection at any point. So we know it will deflect at its maximum here at, at this point, you know, so if, if this was a load, it'll, if it's an upward load, it'll deflect up, and if it's a downward load, it'll deflect down. Uh, so I'm assuming this is a wing of an aircraft, so if we put x is equal to l, so uh, we substitute in l for x, and then that becomes uh, p naught over 360ei times 19 l to the power of 4. So that is the deflection of a parabolic load. Um, hope that's useful, and I hope I've no mistakes in it.